Good morning, rock stars, and welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight, and it is my job to guide you to quote with confidence. Rock stars, I'm so excited to dive into my brand new masterclass, Three Myths About Quilting with Rulers, for the second ever time. Let me turn on just a little light here. I'm a little bit shaded. There we go. Here we are ready to rock and roll. So if you are here with me, do please say hi in the chat. Let me know where you are tuning in from. I'm going to swap my coffee for some water and throw these slides up and we are going to jump right in with both feet. So as I mentioned, this is three myths about quilting with rulers. Um, we're going to go through today some common things that I see our inner mean grump tell us when we're curious about quilting with rulers, but we're also a little bit nervous. Now, it's totally nervous to be a, you know, totally normal to be a little nervous about learning something new, right? That is our brain trying to help keep us alive. Uh, but sometimes our brain kind of lies to us in the process of trying to make sure that we stay safe. So we're going to go ahead and debunk these myths, help you feel confident about your ability to pursue ruler quilting. And then at the end of our time together, I'm going to invite you to join me inside Ruler Quilting Academy. And I'm going to share with you what that means and how you can jump in. Uh, and it's going to be super exciting. All right, Carolyn, I am so excited to see you. Good morning in California. Now, my experience as an educator, uh, as I mentioned, our brains really love to freak out when they, when it comes to learning new things, right? We start to be like, oh, I think I'm interested in learning how to quilt with rulers. And our brain immediately goes, oh no, that's hard. Remember when we heard so-and-so say that thing about quilting with rulers? You definitely can't do that, right? Because as far as our IMG, our inner mean grump is concerned, failing or not being perfect the first time is the same as death. And I'm very happy to say that anything we do in quilting um, is not life or death, right? We are not open heart surgeons. This is our hobby. We are pursuing joy units. And sometimes we just have to remind our brains of that, okay? So learning how to quilt with rulers is no exception. So today we're going to take a couple of those myths head on. And then as I mentioned at the end of our time together, we're going to talk about how you can become a ruler quilting rock star. Now, if you are brand new, to hanging out with me here at the Quilting Rockstars, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Holly Ann Knight. I have been teaching uh, quilting since 2017. I've actually been teaching big picture since about 2007. Yes, yeah, so, man, that's been a long time now. Um, and I've watched thousands of quilters just like you grow in their confidence to finish their own quilts through resources like my blog, my workshops, and my digital courses. Um, I'm married to the Hubster. He's the cutie in the Navy polo in this photo. And we have two boys named Jim and Ian. We live in Duluth, Georgia with our doggo Havana, our two cats, our big, log large fish tanks. And when I am not quilting or hanging out at String and Story on Main, you can find me hanging out on the town green, hiking, or riding my Peloton. Now, as I mentioned, String and Story on Main. String and Story on Main is our brick and mortar shop here. You guessed it, right on Main Street of downtown Duluth. Uh, we opened... 11 months ago this week. So we are coming up on our little one year birthday. We are a boutique sewing and quilting studio in Duluth, Georgia. We carry paintbrush studio fabrics, Moda fabrics, Figo fabrics, Orifil thread, various notions, Burnett sewing machines, and we love hosting classes and events. This is also frequently what you'll see behind me when I'm teaching virtually. Um, today I'm in my home sewing space. You can see my Ruby Star Society hanging over here, uh, waiting to be turned into a quilt. Uh, because Team Rockstar is over at the shop getting ready to open up for a day of business and it's quieter over here. All right. Uh, if you are here in Duluth, Georgia, or you're passing through for any reason, we of course would love to see you at the shop. We are open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Now, a bit of housekeeping. If you are here with me, turn off all distractions, grab some easy chain piecing or a piece of doodle paper, uh, and just enjoy being here um, and debunking these myths with me, all right? I also encourage you to ask all the questions, okay? Um, it is sometimes very difficult when we are trying to learn something new to know how to ask all the questions, right? We have beginner level questions because we are beginner level at whatever the skill is. Um, and those are the kind of things that as grownups, our IMG likes to tell us this story of like, if you ask that beginner level question, people are going to think that you are dumb no one is going to think that you are dumb. I want to make sure that you have all the information you need to go forward with confidence, okay? And sometimes those very entry-level questions are the hardest to find answers to, and that is exactly why I'm here. Now, 
just because you're here with me, I have a gift for you, right? I've already stated my goal for you today is to be able to go forth with confidence, to know how to go further on your ruler quilting journey than you are right now, to quilt with rulers with more confidence than you are right now, to be more of a ruler quilting rock star than you are right now. And I'm going to debunk some myths and give you some tips and tricks today that I hope are going to do that. And then at the end of our time together, we're going to talk about Ruler Quilting Academy, which I know will do that, right? But before we even get to that, I want to make sure you do not leave here empty-handed. I want you to have a resource with you going forward. So I invite you to grab our Confident Ruler Quilting Workbook. Um, this has just foundations about quilting with ruler supplies, some foundational motifs. Why would we quilt with rulers when we could use a walking foot? We're going to talk about that some today as well. Um, what else is in there? There's a whole bunch of resources in there. So there's a QR code here. If you happen to be watching me on a device that is not your phone, you can just open the camera on your phone and scan that QR code. Or I have dropped the link into the chat, stringandstory.com forward slash confident dash ruler dash quilting dash workbook. Or if you just head to the string and story website, click education at the top of the page, it will bump down and you will see quilting rockstar library. And you can click there and find the workbook that way as well. So this is just a gift from me to you because I want you to have a really valuable resource going forward. All right. Good morning, Alicia. It's good to see you. Um, I slept on my glow in the dark pillowcase last night and it glowed for longer than I expected it to. And I think longer than the boys pillowcases glow. It was very cool. It felt like I was sleeping in a galaxy. Uh, context, Alicia was at String and Story last night. We had a glow in the dark space pillowcase sip and sew. Uh, and of course, I had to make a sample in order to teach the class. So I made myself a glow in the dark pillowcase. Yes, I'm very excited about it. It's the little things in life, right? Speaking of something that is not a little thing, something that is a very important thing that if that, you take nothing else away from what I say today, I want to drill this into you. I want this sentence to be louder than your IMG. You can and will be a ruler quilting rock star. You are an extremely capable human. And I'm going to show you some simple steps to take to get closer to this goal. Okay. I might have to sneeze first though. Hang on. Okay. We're good. It was so much fun, Alicia. Oh my goodness. So without further ado, three myths about quilting with rulers that you might believe and that we're going to debunk. What is a quilting ruler? Okay. A quilting ruler. Do I have an illustration? I do. A quilting ruler is a thick piece of acrylic designed to help you make specific lines and shapes as you quilt your quilt. All right. Think of this as when you go bowling, right? The goal is to throw said bowling ball down the lane to hit the pins. But if you throw it a little wonky, it's going to go whoop, and it's going to veer off course into the gutter unless you put the bumpers up, right? And then when you put the bumpers up, it can only go straight down and hit the pins. When we are quilting, we have a form of free motion foot on our machine. We put what's called a ruler foot on our machine. It's this round metal foot. It's got tall sides where the ruler can bump up against it. Okay. And we can free motion with that foot. We can make any design that we want. Our ruler doop, acts like a bumper. And it helps us create a very specific line or a very specific curve or a very specific shape as we push our fabric underneath our machine. All right. It is not the same ruler as one you use for cutting. This is one you use for cutting. See how bouncy and springy and thin it is? This is very, very dangerous if you try to use it for quilting. Please do not do that. Okay. That is too thin. It can slide under that ruler foot. The needle can hit it. Bad things happen. Okay, so quilting rulers are thicker, they're sturdier than what we use for cutting. Um, you can sometimes find quilting rulers that are called low shank or high shank, and that thickness will vary a little bit based on the machine um, and how long of a space you have at the back of your foot. If you are ever in doubt about what ruler to use with your machine, aim for high shank, right? Worst case scenario, if you're on a low shank machine and you buy a high shank, sometimes called a long arm, quilting ruler. You may not be able to put the ruler directly behind your foot because the shank will be in the way. I don't really recommend putting the ruler back there anyway. It's really hard to hold on to and you put yourself in danger of sewing your fingers. So it is much safer to have a high shank ruler with a low shank machine than a low shank ruler and actually be on a high shank machine. So we err on the side of safety. I generally recommend erring towards a high shank ruler. 
okay? Using rulers is a really cool way to finish your quilts because it allows you to add all types of geometric shapes to them. So as you can see here, we have grids, we have bricks, we have continuous curves, we have dot to dot quilting, we have church windows and more. This kind of precision and crisp line is next to impossible for most people when free motion quilting. It's much, much easier with the right tool of a quilting ruler, all right? Now, if you're here and you're already thinking, but I have a walking foot, don't you worry. I have thoughts on that too, okay? Oh, my top slides are skipping. Hold, please. Maybe it's just taking a minute to load. Oh, that's very frustrating. All right, the slide that is supposed to be loading that is currently on the struggle bus, even if I select it there, says myth number one. Quilting with rulers is only for long arm quilters. This myth, of course, is false. Using a ruler is practically a necessity for long armers, at least when it comes to stitching in the ditch and stitching clean diagonal lines, okay? That's because if you are quilting on a long arm, you have an X axis and a Y X axis and a Y axis, right? Your machine is very, very good at going up and down and very, very good at going sideways. If you want to go diagonally and make a smooth diagonal line, you have to, this is like an Etch-a-Sketch, right? You have to very perfectly move along both axes simultaneously. I know I don't have steady enough hands to do that consistently, right? So my diagonal line ends up a little bit wobbly, kind of like if you try to make a diagonal on an Etch-a-Sketch and it goes up on the diagonal, but it has some little stair steps to it, right? So most long armors end up learning how to quilt with rulers pretty quickly in their quilting journey because they go, well, I, I need to be able to stitch in the ditch. I need to be able to stitch on the diagonal. And the way to do that really cleanly is to have that bumper of a ruler. But quilters on all machines can use rulers for steady lines and cool geometric shapes. It's not just for long armors, even if long armors tend to learn a little earlier in their journeys than others. For a long time, I didn't understand why I might use a ruler on my domestic machine when I could just use my walking foot. OK, then and this was, I don't know, five years ago now, um, I upgraded my machine. I had been on a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. This is an off the shelf machine. I bought it on Amazon. I was a new sewist. I didn't have a lot of machine dollars to spend. Right. Um, love that machine. But then I upgraded. And my next machine after that was a Juki J150. That's an industrial machine. 2000 stitches per minute. Chef's kiss. Now, that machine came with two feet. It came with a piecing foot and it came with a ruler foot. And so I began to do all my free motion quilting with a ruler foot. And one day I needed to stitch in the ditch and it was kind of wobbly. And I was like, I think I have a ruler around here somewhere. Cause I also had a long arm. I'd bought it for the long arm. I'd never used it on my domestic. I'd been quilting with rulers on my long arm for year, two years, three years at this point. I was like, I think this will work on my domestic slap my ruler up there. And then I realized that if I was free motion quilting with my ruler foot and I needed to have those nice straight lines and I used my ruler to do that, I could switch back and forth seamlessly. And immediately it became easier to travel from section to section on my quilts, um, to accent areas with stitch in the ditch and with echoes and without that feeling like such an overwhelming task. If I have to stop, I have to break thread. I have to change the foot on my machine. I have to do the thing I need to do. I have to break thread again. I have to change the foot on my machine again, right? All of a sudden I could make a quilting plan that moved across the quilt seamlessly, even if it meant changing back and forth between straight lines and FMQ. Game changer. Absolutely. If, if you learn how to quilt with a ruler and you do very little beyond stitch in the ditch, this has the power to be a game changer for you, especially if you love to finish your own quilts, all right? So myth number two, quilting with rulers is an easy way to avoid learning free motion quilting. Just last week, I had a lovely uh, lady in my shop and I overheard her speaking to a friend um, and we had just had a conversation about free motion quilting. I went off to do something else and I overheard the two of them talking and one friend said to the other, I don't wanna learn how to free motion quilt. I'm just gonna buy a bunch of those templates and follow along. And she meant specialty quilting rulers, right? And if that's what works for you, you know I am always here to support what works best for you on your journey. And there are reasons why you might consider using custom rulers instead of free motion quilting. That's another discussion for another day, right? But generally speaking, this myth is absolutely false. 
right? And one of the biggest, well, there are two big reasons. Big reason number one, the motion, especially on a sit down machine, the motion of navigating a quilt underneath your machine for free motion quilting and for quilting with rulers is the same motion. Except that if you add the ruler for the ruler quilting, you've added an additional variable. You've added an additional layer of complexity. And if you've taken any of my free motion quilting education, you know I'm a big fan of let's add one layer of complexity at a time, right? So when you're first wanting to finish your own quilt, I always recommend you doodle first. You need to understand the motif first. Then you try it on a practice sandwich. So we go from, I just have to know how the motif works. I already understand the pen and paper. I got to learn how this feels to move something under my machine and make this motif with a needle and thread. But I'm not going to have a big quilt. I'm not going to add a lot of bulk. Then I'm going to add a bigger quilt. I'm going to add some bulk, right? And then I generally recommend if you want to add ruler work, right? So having a little bit of a foundation of FMQ, even if it's just a few motifs, and build your layers of complexity, right? So big reason number one that I consider this myth about using rulers instead of FMQ to be false um, is because you're jumping into what it, it, that stage of your journey would be the hardest way to do this, okay? The second reason that I consider this myth to be false is because rulers are really expensive. Like not to deter you or anything, but like they're an investment item, okay? Um, the absolute necessity ruler that I recommend, and this is just full transparency, right? It's an every angle ruler, it's a straight edge right? It retails at $24.99. So these are not quick, let me pick up another $2 thing to add to my toolbox, right? This is why when we get to Ruler Quilting Academy, one of the things we're going to talk about is how I've tried to really curate the rulers that we use for the class so that you can make an investment and that investment is going to take you a long way, right? So relying on rulers to do all the different motifs in the whole entire world that you want to do is going to add up really quickly. And, and for most of us, that's just simply not feasible, right? Hi, Kayleen. <laughs> Kayleen's like, yes, yes, they are, right? And all four investment tools, if you're going to use them and know how to use them and use them well. Part of my full body reaction that you can probably see to this idea of just using rulers and not using FMQ is because I know too many people who have spent a lot of money on rulers and never use them right? And I, I want to guide you how to invest wisely with, with your money as you buy tools and also with your time as you learn skills, right? So, and make the most of those um, in terms of how frequently you can utilize those skills and supplies and how much joy you have in the process, right? We want to make the process fun, not frustrating, okay? Third myth. Oh, here, let me, let me break this down. So even if you prefer to work with rulers, knowing the basics of FMQ is going to help you build up the proper muscle uh, of strength and the hand-eye coordination in order to use these rulers successfully. Having some foundational FMQ will also allow you to be more strategic about your ruler shopping. Okay? We want to save some money on this. Now, myth number three. This is kind of in contrast to the other ones. Ooh, let's see. Kyle says, they feel expensive when you buy them because they are just plastic. Then when you realize that all the markings do, you see the value. I love the every angle ruler too. Yes. Kristen says, I totally agree. I have a bunch of money in rulers that I haven't dared to use yet. Y'all, let's change that. Let's get y'all using these rulers. I, yes. And using them to their maximum ability, just like Kyle said. Yes, please. I am here for all of this. All right. So quilting with rulers is only for super experienced quilters. This is kind of the flip of some of what we've been talking about. This is also false. Stitch in the ditch is a key skill for quilting on both domestic and long arm quilting machines. It is key for emphasizing specific areas of the quilt. It is key for moving from section to section of the quilt or as an entire quilting plan, depending on the scale of the quilt. In fact, it is considered such a foundational and common skill in quilting that when I was a brand new baby quilter, right, and I had just pieced my very first quilt top out of actual quilting cotton. I had done some t-shirt quilts. This was my first, like, I'd actually got quilting cotton and pieced a thing. And I had read some books on FMQ. I had been on the internet. I had seen how cool it was. And in my head, I was like, I want a free motion quilting this. Free motion quilt this. Uh, and I made this offhand comment to someone when I was at work the following uh, week. 
And I was like, yeah, but now I got to, you know, got to quilt it. And this person said to me, as we're like passing in a hallway, oh, that's the easy part. You just stitch in the ditch and kept walking, right? Stitch in the ditch is considered so foundational that it was a passing in the hallway conversation with this other person, right? So all that to say, <laughs> especially if you are adding free motion quilting into your repertoire at all, or if you're on a frame, you're gonna need this skill out of the gate. It's really important and it's gonna make your life a lot easier for all the reasons we previously discussed. I recommend mastering Stitch in the Ditch with a ruler ASAP. And while you're at it, why not tackle a few other ruler quilting motifs too, right? If you're gonna buy that every angle ruler, let's teach you how to use it to the best of its ability, right? Kayleen, those learning curves can be so hard. I'm here to try to shorten that learning curve as much as I can, absolutely. So you certainly can use rulers to create much more complex motifs. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Beth Ann Namish, but she has some incredible feather curve rulers to make very specific, very intricate feather spines, right? So you absolutely can go to the moon and back with the, the complexity of this. But every confident ruler quilting rock star starts with the basic skill, and that is being able to stitch in the ditch, stitch a straight line, all right? So just like free motion quilting, I recommend that you start to build this toolbox sooner rather than later adding more designs to your skill and as, as adding more designs to your toolbox as your skill and confidence grow. Okay. Now I say that because I want to say this action cures fear, right? If you get a ruler, whether you're part of ruler quilting Academy or not, you download that free workbook, you get your hands on a ruler, you try it. It's probably not going to be perfect the first time right? But then you'll have started. And as soon as you get into motion, that IMG has to quiet down because your brain is too busy trying this new cool thing. All right. Now, before I share with y'all a couple more steps of how you can go to the next level with this, do you have any questions about these myths? I have talked a mile a minute for 21 minutes straight. So do you have any questions that I can answer before we start talking about how you actually begin to develop these skills? And while y'all are typing, I will hydrate because I talked a mile a minute, all right? Make sure I didn't miss any questions over here. Perfect, if you have them, type them in the chat. Ooh, Jenny says, which rulers do you use in Ruler Quilting Academy? Great question. So um, our most foundational rulers are the every angle ruler. That is a straight edge. Then there is the every curve set. And that is a set of three pretty gentle curves. Of the 28 motifs uh, in the class, I think that does 26 of them really, really well. Uh, continuous curves and clamshells work best. You can do them with the gentler curves, but they work best with a steeper curve. So this time around, we have added the option of the every circle set. So every angle is one ruler, every curve is three rulers. If you do the every circle, that would be a total of nine rulers, right? Um, and then really the sky's the limit once you have those. There just are so many things that you can do with a straight edge, some curves, and some circles. Yeah, great question, Jenny. Um, and I've had a couple of folks email in because as we just you know very frankly talked about, you know, rulers are an investment. And if you're excited to get started on this journey, but you're a little nervous about the investment of all these rulers, uh, my recommendation, and you know, and I can say this again in a second after I actually share more about Ruler Quilting Academy with y'all, uh, but my recommendation is to go ahead and jump into the class and just get the every angle ruler for right now. You can do so much of the course with just a straight edge, and you can spend a lot of time finessing those options. Um, and incorporating ruler quilting into what you already know from free motion quilting. Um, Cause you know, Jenny, having gone through FMQA, like that will give you a really beefy toolbox of stuff you can do. And then you can add the other rulers and go through those lessons later on. Yeah. So there definitely are ways to stair step this skill building, which, you know, cause by the time you get the course, you get a ruler foot. If you're on a long run, you get a ruler table, you get some rulers. Um, I, I know that this is an investment skill. So there definitely are ways to kind of step that up and not have to do everything all at once. Great question, Jenny. Um, Kyle says, my questions are all answered with practice, practice, practice. I do feel like I've emailed that to you a few times. That's a fair point. <laughs> so how can you become a confident 
ruler quilting rock star, I have two resources for you. All right. One of them I already gave you at the start of our time together, and that's this confident ruler quilting workbook. Um, it's going to walk through some of the things we've talked about today. It goes a little bit beyond what we've talked about in these last 20 minutes or so uh, and gets you started with the idea of like, let's try stitch in the ditch, right? Um, it's just a workbook. There's no videos with it, but it'll give you the idea uh, and get over that hump of action curing fear. So once again, I'm going to drop that link down in the chat. This is a totally free gift. Thank you for being here and spending your time with me. I want to make sure that you have a good resource to take with you. The second resource that I have that we have, we've gone beyond hinting at it. We're just straight up talking about it at this point. Um, it's Ruler Quilting Academy. And I would be so delighted to see each and every one of you inside of this course. Ruler Quilting Academy is a proven method for learning this new skill of quilting with rulers. Inside RQA, we'll build on the lessons from what we've talked about today with eight weeks of step-by-step -step videos designed to help you become confident at quilting with rulers. Uh, Elizabeth just graduated from RQA this last weekend, and she writes, I love your videos. You explain things clearly. You are inspiring, and I love that you sometimes have a bobble, but you keep going. That means that I can, too. Your Q&A sessions are fun, and your enthusiasm is contagious. Mary says, I really enjoyed RQA, and I felt like I learned a lot. I took your introduction to rulers in 2021, and RQA took my skills to a new level. Mary, I love that you shared that, because I think it's really important to know that even if you've dabbled with rulers before, RQA is going to really help you level up those skills as you continue on. All right. So here's a little glimpse of what Ruler Quilting Academy includes. It includes lifetime access to the course, teaching you all the skills you need for successful ruler quilting from start to finish. It includes six video units full of tips, tricks, and motifs from stitch in the ditch to complex clamshell borders. There's a complete toolbox of ruler techniques for you to learn. It includes live video Q and A's so that you can ask questions and we can talk about how to blend free motion quilting with ruler quilting um, and really make sure that these skills get implemented into your day-to-day -day quilting life, right? It includes a full color workbook with doodle pages, quick guides, and more, and ongoing updates. So one of the updates that we're adding right now is that I'm adding a bonus unit for those of you who are quilting on the frame. And that's gonna be me doing a few motifs on the long arm, talking about ruler positioning on the long arm, because this whole class is filmed on my Bernina 590. That's a sit down domestic machine. Okay, so this is absolutely for you if you're on a domestic machine. But some of my rock stars who took this with the founding cohort over the winter, uh, their key feedback was I'm on a frame. It would have been really helpful to have some safety and ruler handling tips for quilting on a frame. So we're adding that in. The other big update that is on the horizon is we are planning to professionally film this course later this year. Right now it is filmed on my iPhone. They're very functional videos, very educational. Our students have already had a lot of success with them. But you know, we love to take things to the next level. We want things to be top notch around here. So when we refilm this, you will get that upgrade at no additional charge. All right. So right now, Ruler Quilting, is, uh, Ruler Quilting Academy is enrolling through Saturday, April 1st. That's three days, y'all. Today, tomorrow, Saturday. For a one-time tuition payment of $247 US or three payments of $78. And I would love to see you there. So let me grab this link. And then I see Margo has a question. And then we're going to keep going through just a little bit more of an overview about Ruler Quilting Academy. So if you're already like, yes, I absolutely want to learn how to quilt with rulers, sign me up. There is a link for you. Margo says, I have a straight edge and a ruler that has two arcs. I do not have circles. How many motifs use circles? I mostly use the circle ruler for the clamshell. So depending on how steep the arcs are, Margo, you may be able to use what you already have. Um, and if you're unsure, send me a picture of your rulers and I will let you know via email. Because that I've had a lot of rock search and I'd be like, will these rulers work? Um, and I love being able to weigh in and save y'all from having to buy redundant supplies if possible. Valerie says, will you add the new long arm parts of the Kajabi for those of us who took the first cohort? Yes. Um, you as part of the founding cohort also receive all of these updates. So yes, Valerie, that will be showing up in Kajabi. Um, I think we have it slated for Monday the 17th. So about two weeks from now. Great question. So Ruler Quilting Academy allows you to learn how to quilt with rulers from the privacy and comfort of your own home, right? Nobody's looking over your shoulder. You don't have to feel nervous about how the person next to you is doing. You get to move at your perfect pace. Um, and if you hit a moment of celebration, you can celebrate with wild abandon. And if you hit a moment of frustration, you can walk away and you're not losing any class time, right? 
Ruler Quilting Academy strategically teaches you how to use a core collection of rulers rather than asking you to buy all one frillion that are available on the market. Ruler Quilting Academy is ready when you are, regardless of geography or time zone, with on-demand pre-recorded video lessons. Yet it also offers you ongoing access to me, the instructor, as well as your fellow classmates, so that you never feel alone or stuck and you can get near real-time help during our live streamed Q&A sessions. Lastly, Ruler Quilting Academy connects you to other rock stars in training around the world so that you can help and encourage each other, right? There's just nothing more fun than doing something new with friends. Um, let's see. Stacy says, I haven't managed to finish FMQA. I am worried this course will be the same. Stacy, have you used any of your skills from FMQA to finish quilts yet? Because with all of our courses, the biggest goal is to get you finishing your own quilts. Whether or not you fully finish the course is going to be based on your own needs and your own time. So Stacey, I would say if you are already applying for Emotion Quilting Academy to finish quilts, even if you haven't finished learning absolutely everything that's in the course, then you're already succeeding with FMQA. See, you're, you're already succeeding. You've already won, Stacey. The rest is just glitter. That's just frosting and sprinkles, right? Um, and so I would encourage you, if there are ruler quilting motifs that um, you're wanting to learn, that you're wanting to incorporate, um, the line of success or failure is not perfect completion and graduation, right? We absolutely offer a graduation in Ruler Quilting Academy, just like we do with FMQA, because that can be a really fun motivator. And it's a really fun way for us to mark a milestone in your quilting journey. But the success metric is, are you finishing your own quilts? All right. Kyle says, Stacey, let's form a club. I've taken every stringing story course so far, except for this one. Still working towards my first graduation. And yes, I'm learning. That's why I keep signing up. Kyle, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I was trying to put words to. Thank you so much. Beller says, I took FMQA, then I took Ruler Academy. Both courses have great motives. It was nice to learn a better way to make straight lines and to stitch in the ditch. Valerie, that is so helpful. Thank you so much for sharing. Megan, who just graduated, said, I love the permission to play. Great videos to show us how to do each motif with no firm requirement on how we had to use it in the final project. I thought that would be difficult, but once I got going, it really wasn't that hard. Practice is fun. You give us the confidence to get past our fears and get started. I really enjoyed this class, possibly even more than the free motion one. I saw that and I was like, oh, right? Because we know FMQ is my first love, but that's exciting. That means we're doing it right. Because the whole point is we want y'all to have fun. We want joy units and we want finished quilts. I love it. Gail says, I loved learning how to use the rulers to make different shapes for backgrounds, fillers, and borders. I love Talian's realness and her teaching and her positive, encouraging attitude. Thanks, Gail. And Beverly says, I love Talian's enthusiasm and positivity, as well as her energy. Love being able to go back to each lesson and watch and practice a design. So, Rockstar, if you are excited about being able to add ruler quilting to your toolbox of finishing your quilts, to expand your repertoire and to learn with me, uh, please jump in today, um, stringofstory.com forward slash RQ Academy. And it is available for you to enroll for one tuition payment of $247 or three payments of $78. All right, new student orientation is gonna start next week. Um, and we will go ahead and release unit one for those of you who already have some rulers and are ready to get started. Um, my students who have already enrolled, because I know a few of you are here, you're going to get an email with a tweak to our schedule later today. Um, and that tweak is that we've had some shipping delays and printing delays with getting your practice panels. So we've actually shifted the schedule just a little bit to give a little bit more time so those kits can arrive. So we're kicking off next week. We'll get really started in earnest um, on the 17th. So that gives just a wee bit more time. And we're very, very excited. But enrollment is only open until April 1st. So if you are excited, you do need to go ahead and jump in. All right. Any questions that I can answer for y'all? I so appreciate you spending time with me today. Thank you for coming along on this journey as we debunked three key myths about quilting with rulers. And we talked about how we can overcome the fear that those myths create in order to become confident ruler quilting rock stars. I hope I see each and every one of you inside of Ruler Quilting Academy. Um, and do please make sure that you're on our newsletter list as well. You can sign up on that from stringandstory.com or if you snag that workbook, that will put you on our list because we may have a tweak to this live schedule next Thursday. I'm going to be out of town. 
So we may not have a YouTube video. So just watch your inbox for your newsletter. It'll give you all the updates. In the meanwhile, go jump into RQA and I will see you there. Bye for now.